Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Arizona Coyotes franchise mode here in NHL 22. So I apologize if my voice sounds a little husky. I'm still kind of getting over my uh, COVID case that I had. And uh, thank you guys for reaching out that you did. And um, I'm pretty much better and I am ready to record again. So it's just my voice is still a little bit off and whatnot. But uh, we should be better in full health by next week, which is good. So videos would be back to normal. And anyways, let's get into a this Arizona episode so basically in the last episode we took on the Colorado Avalanche and uh, yeah it was kind of an interesting episode because we were up three to nothing it looked all good and then this team got reverse swept which was really unfortunate uh, Mitchkov was still a beast though he had seven goals in seven games to add to his 64 he had in the regular season and then also I think Shelley stepped up decently if I'm not mistaken um, and then our goaltending was really good in the playoffs, which is kind of surprising, but this team's offense was dropping off a lot, which was not good. Like Guys like Sharon Govich were held without a goal. Uh, Shishkinov didn't have a goal, but he's more of a playmaker, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, but yeah, him like Byfield, Dumai, who we brought in at the trade deadline, didn't do anything really. So it just it, the depth scoring wasn't there that we needed, and hopefully this team... Could be a little bit better going into next season. Pedersen was really good this year, which is kind of a surprise because he has been a bit of a problematic goalie in the playoffs before, but this year he was actually really good. And of course, this time around, our offense doesn't produce. So um, hopefully we could find out uh, what is causing these troubles and hopefully we can make our team better this offseason and hopefully next year we can make a run for a Stanley Cup or even farther than the first round at least because this team has had four straight first round exits I think now so hopefully we could improve upon uh, the season where we had a lot of offense from Mitch Kov and stuff like that. Now, anyways, before we get into the draft in the resign stage, we do have one comment. Well, it's a couple of comments from Hawksfan88. He says, reverse swept, ouch. And yeah, that was the <laughs> the worst case scenario because like when we've lost in the first round before, it's been like kind of like blowout games and we didn't lose in like a reverse sweep fashion. So it hasn't been like the worst thing. Um, and then we go into this one where we actually have a good looking team and then we get reverse swept and yeah, it was not what I was expecting from this team. Um, I was really expecting a lot more. So hopefully we could just build upon the season and be even better than this year. Hawksman also, uh, I asked him uh, about uh, some suggestions and stuff with like our cap space and all that stuff. And he says uh, he's on board with taking Bilesma on the draft, who is the prospect I was looking at at the end of last episode. Uh, so we more than likely will draft Bilesma unless we trade away our first round picks, which might happen because I am trying to trade for a player in this offseason. I got some really interesting things playing just like last offseason. Um, and then he also says, also make just uh, just make sure to re-sign all your big pieces and young guys. And then he says he would let go of Dumai just because of what he's asking for it is probably way more than he's actually really worth. So, and then he does say to run Hornquist and Pedersen next season, which means also Hunter Jones is going to be on his way out. I am probably going to also let go of a couple other players, but it depends on what happens uh, with the trade that we're going to be potentially making at the draft because I am going to be looking at inquiring uh, Sebastian Ajo from the Carolina Hurricanes. And you might be like, why would you try and acquire Sebastian Ajo? Well, he is, I believe, he is a pending free agent, which is really good. Um, so we basically have, we could trade for his rights. He is dropping off in potential as well which is kind of a little bit risky, but this guy is insane. He's a good fit for the top six probably as well. And yeah, he's had three straight 100-point seasons. So if we could bring him in on uh, for that second line uh, to play center or even to play left wing, that would be good because we don't really have a lot of left wingers. We could play him as a left wing instead of a centerman because we could always try and bring back somebody like Byfield, Sharon Govich, Geeky, one of those three for that second line. Um, so yeah, I'm going to probably try and trade for Sebastian Ajo's rights, so that way we could try and sign him before the UFA, like he's a UFA and stuff like that, where he's demanding more money. Uh, we should be able to try and do the 85% trick, just like we did with Mitchkov. And since he's 33, I don't see him wanting a whole lot of term. Uh, so we should be able to get him to like a three-year deal or something like that because uh, I don't want to sign him longer than three years because that's when Agostino's contract is done and Agostino is like the key piece of this team I think uh, so I would really like to get Ajo in for less than three years or like one to three years somewhere around there but uh, I think he could definitely bring that offense we need in that top six because our top six is still 
not uh, really that great. Like, I mean, it is good, but it doesn't have a good left winger. So if we get in Ajo's rights, I think we could uh, definitely make some noise. And then that would probably make us let go of somebody like La Rose or something instead. So Shishkinov could run the third line on the left side, that type of thing. So we definitely have some ideas on mind on what we could do for this team. We probably will have to give up one of our snipers in the bottom six to get uh, Ajo, uh, but it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, let's get into this draft and see if we can make a trade for Sebastian Ajo's rights. I don't know if Carolina really wants to get rid of him, but uh, I am going to try and get it anyways because that's the only thing my brain can compute right now is trying to trade for him. So, because it's kind of hard to focus on this game. They are trying to get rid of Marty Natius, which is interesting. He is a center as well. Uh, but I want Ajo. They do not want to trade Ajo, it says, but his value is low, so we are going to try and trade for it. Um, now let's take a look at what they actually like on this team. They don't like a whole lot. We could give up Hortichuk, but I really, uh, I don't know if I could use him or not. Because we are going to be drafting another defenseman in this draft, so that's NHL ready, which would push uh, Hortichuk further down the pipeline on Demon. Now this guy does have X factors, which makes it kind of questionable, but it does raise his value a little bit. They also do want DeMaio. And DeMaio is um, uh, like NHL ready this year, but I am not really sold on DeMaio being an NHL defenseman because he's already 22. Like, I mean, if I was to keep DeMaio, I would be able to draft that other defenseman. That other defenseman could play in the NHL right away instead of DeMaio. Hmm. Oh, they do want Riley. That's good, actually, that they want Riley. We could give them Riley because Riley is one of these guys that is probably going to have to get traded away for sure. And then what else do they like? Not really a whole lot. Uh, if we go to draft picks, can I throw in like maybe a second rounder for next year? Yeah, that should go through, I would assume. So Ajo for Riley and for a second... You guys might be wondering why I'm trying to trade away Riley. It's not like he's been a bad player. He was a plus 18 in the regular season, a minus 5 in the playoffs, but it's because we got other defensemen in the system that could replace him. So it's basically just doing that. And also, Riley is a terrible fit for that top 6 pairing, which is what I brought him in for. Uh, so I think this makes sense because he doesn't really work with our coach. Uh, but Riley in a second... Actually, can I try a third rounder first? Just because I want to make sure this value isn't way too much in our favor. Um, yeah, that might be a little bit more even. So Riley in a third for Sebastian Ajo's rights. Rejected, okay, so we might have to do the second. That's okay. Because we are a contending team, so we don't really need those picks. Riley in a second for Ajo. Accepted, perfect. That was a good trade, I think. Riley in a second to take Sebastian Ajo's rights, and we got our, our star player. He might be a bit older and drop off and stuff like that, uh, but he is a good pickup for this team. And we didn't even give up any prospects. We gave up a guy we signed last year in free agency and a second rounder. That's not much of anything. Okay, so now that that is done, now let's take a look at uh, this draft. So San Jose just took a franchise player in Jean Desjardins. The most French name ever. Looks like a very good sniper. Dallas at number two is going to take Postma, who's a high top six. That's a little bit of a weird one for a second overall pick. Hmm. So yeah, this draft class might not be that great. Hopefully we can still get that defenseman that uh, Hawks fan was mentioning. Um, medium elite Hartman goes to Tampa Bay. Defensive defenseman. See, I don't know why Dallas didn't do that. Dallas has just had really bad picks, and Dallas is a team that's been in trouble with rebuilding and stuff like that because of Mitch Goff and whatnot. Like, uh, this team has never made the playoffs so far, and now they just drafted a high top six second overall. That's a little bit weird. Vancouver at number four is going to take Cogliano. Pretty good power forward. <clears throat> Looks like he's going to become a good goal scorer, if I'm not mistaken. Also, sorry if my voice sounds like it's going to die on me again. I hope it doesn't because it's hard to record otherwise. And then finally, Nashville at number five is going to take Coley Akavo. He was another sniper. There's his stats. Another good shooter for sure. So those are your top five for this year's draft. Let's sum up to our pick at 25. We should be able to get our boy. Who the heck is this Duda do out of here? Yes, Damien Duda. 
I was hoping he'd have a cooler name, though, because <laughs> it would just be kind of a funny name. I don't know. Um, so, who was the guy we're going to go after again? Pinned. It was Biles mode, yeah. He's supposed to go in the second round, but you look at his stats, he might be really good. He's got no weakness, and he's guaranteed to be NHL ready, so it's like we might as well take him. So, Gabriel Bilesma, welcome to the Arizona Coyotes, and he's a 77 low elite. Okay, great. Wow. And he's got X-Factors. That is actually amazing. He's not ready to be in the NHL, but since he played in the United States, we could play him in the AHL as early as next season. Wow. He's he's a DFD, which kind of sucks, but uh, still, him, like having him and uh, what's his name, um, Sasaki on like the penalty kill and stuff like that, that's some really good uh, defensive shutdown kind of guys, and that's exactly what we need, I think. So I really like that. He probably won't be in our lineup next season, like I said, So, but at least he is getting close, and then he could probably play like on a top six pairing like next season, maybe, or not next season, but two seasons from now. With like DeMaio or something like that. That'd be nice. We don't have a lot of picks left in this draft, I don't think. So at least this draft should go pretty quick. Yeah, we only have a third, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. Because we made a lot of trades involving picks. Because um, obviously I was trying to get this team to win as soon as possible. So, And yeah, hopefully we could get Aho on a good deal. Like I said, I'm going to try and give him the 85% trick right after the draft. And then... Hopefully this team could be pretty good cap wise as well. We do have a lot of RFAs that could qualify, so we could get their asking price down. Noble Seltsov is three years out. Um, does have a lot of weaknesses, mainly due to his size. But I'm a, I think I'm okay with that. I like smaller players anyways. So let's try on Noble Seltsov, see if he's a low lead as well. And he's a low top six sniper. Not bad. Maybe he becomes something, but he does have some really weird attributes, so but his shooting is definitely his best category. So we'll see if that guy pans out. Sim to our next pick now. And yeah, this draft class is not that good. Exactly what I was expecting. Uh, let's sort back by scouting rank. Yeah, I really don't know what we go with. Maybe just this top nine. Just to try and find something to fit into the bottom six, maybe eventually. So yeah, let's take Sergei Plakanov. I have had luck with Puklanovs before. 49 overall, medium top 6, damn. Top 6 potential is not what I was expecting, but 49 overall is probably not that great. It'll probably take this guy like 6 plus years to develop if he's even able to get to like the 70s. But he might not even get signed, who knows. And then our final pick, I think? No, our second last pick. Or do we have a 7th rounder? I don't even remember. It might be our second last pick. Um, because I could easily lose my train of thought with this uh, sickness. It's kind of annoying. Um, no weakness. That's kind of interesting. And we'll take this guy since he has no weakness. And then we should take one more player. Medium bottom six, two way forward, and yeah, pretty balanced all around. But I don't think he's going to be making it either since he's a bottom six. But it is what it is. And our last pick of this draft, which I think has been good for us for an extent with that first round pick at least. Considering we had little picks and we managed to hit a good low elite, I think that was a success for sure. This guy doesn't have good character, which is not great. Uh, the scouts are recommending us one of these three, which I don't know anything about any of them. We haven't drafted much defensemen other than the first rounders, so you know what, we're just going to take this Bernarski guy. Yeah. Might as well. 7th D, 52. Yikes. Yeah, this draft class is maybe one of the worst I've seen in a while. So there you go. That was the draft, and we have acquired Sebastian Ajo as well, which is great. Now we got to try and do that 85% trick, which should be interesting. I am going to have to open up my calculator here and try this out. I might give them a little bit more than 85%, just like I did with Mishkov, because I don't know if they will accept straight out 85%. What is Ajo offer, uh, asking for? And he actually does want to resign, which is nice. What is he wanting? 12 million. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I could try that. I, I know he wants a lot of money, but uh, he is a good player when you put him with the right guys. I am going to give him a three-year deal, which might be a little bit of a stretch, but I do want to keep him around here uh, to help out the top six as much as possible, especially Shelly. Uh, so we will try that 12.625, and we're going to try this times 0.9 instead, maybe. Yeah, 0.9 maybe. 
Uh, that's still 11 million. But then again, like I said, we could let go of a center and stuff like that. We could make up that cap space. Hmm. What if I do the 12625 and then we try... I wasn't expecting him to demand this much, but it's okay. We could definitely get him, I think. Um, let's try instead of 0.9, let's try 0.87 instead. Yeah, I could try the 0.87. So we're going to try 87%, and I'm going to try and do 10985 and see if that works. Or actually, I can't do 10985. I actually have to do 11 million on the dots. So three years at 11 million, that's not too bad, I would say, to get a legit threat onto the top six. So we're going to try that, see if he accepts that. Hopefully he does. Because he does want to resign, so he should accept it, I would assume. And then, yeah, the rest of this is going to come down to when we get into that resign stage. Chikrin's the big one that we want to get back, but we definitely want to try and get back at least two of these three centers and then a couple other players as well to fill out our bottom six. And then we also got our R phase, uh, some defensemen, that type of thing. So let's advance a day into the resign stage, see if we get uh, Aho back. Hopefully, we do. Um, we got some AHL coaches to resign. Might as well resign them. The AHL team has been pretty good, I think. But they've just not had the playoff success. What was this guy? He was the head coach. Okay. This guy's got two Zs as his name. That's actually kind of interesting. Zachariah Zanetti. And then Mich uh, Michesney is associate. There you go. I don't really focus on the AHL coaches that much, but it is what it is. We do got to get back some scouts, which is kind of annoying. Because every time we have to get back these scouts, they always accept right before other players do. And it's like, it's, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Um, let's see, we got Melikar. Dominic Melikar. Who else we got here? Casper. And I think that's it. Yep, that is it for uh, scouts. Okay. And Ajo is accepted. Perfect. So three years at 11 million, I think that's a good deal for him. Because now our top six might be a little bit a legit more of a threat. We do have 45 million in cap space as well, which is good. And yeah, we still got to get Chicky back, which is the big one. And then, like I said, I think we might let go of a center. And I'm leaning towards either Byfield or Sharon Govich. Byfield more just because he didn't do much in the playoffs and he's going to be demanding more. Uh, Sharon Govich more because of his age. So let's get into this and start off with our R phase and just qualify all of them because I want their asking prices to come down a little bit first. Um, we could sign all the AHL guys easily if we want to. Yeah, we're going to just sign all the AHL dudes. Um, I might have to let go of some of the AHL UFAs though just to make room for some of the youngsters because we do have a lot of forwards in the NHL right now so we do need to sign some AHL defenders. Okay, so all those RFAs are good. Hornquist is going to be in the NHL this year, but... Hmm. I am going to qualify him as... Actually, I don't want to qualify him right now. I'll just give him the one-year deal right now at 925. Uh, but uh, obviously, we will like, try and extend him as long as possible because I think he might be the starting option for the future over Pedersen. Pedersen does not want to come back, which is interesting, but he's an RFA. So maybe next episode we take compensation from him instead and run another goalie instead of him. I don't know. Uh, he's a good goalie when he does play good, but sometimes he's not very inconsistent. Or sometimes he's not consistent enough, so we'll just qualify him. Uh, but I wouldn't mind bringing him back. But if we need to, maybe we let him go. Uh, let me go to unsigned first and sign up Bilesma for the AHL just because we do need a defenseman in there. I do want to sign Utsorf as well, but we have a lot of forwards, so I need to make sure we're letting go of somebody first in the AHL, which there is a couple guys we're going to let go of. We're going to have to let go of... Um, yeah, we're going to let go of Arnsby in the AHL. We're going to let go of Semenov. A lot of these guys did not pan out. I don't want to let go of Ortmeier, really. Koltsov I could let go of. Hmm. Koltsov's only 25. He's a decent AHLer, but we need to let go of him because we got too much forwards down there. And Ortmeier, I would like to try and keep you around. Because you got X Factors and stuff. I'm gonna let uh resign Appleby or get Appleby into the AHL. I would like to get a lot of these guys into the AHL. We're gonna let go of Howe. 
as well. We're going to sign Google A. And Spalling is also decent. When was he drafted? Third round. Hmm. Don't know if he's going to really make it, but he's decent overall wise. Let's sign him up. And then, yeah, let's let go of these other guys. And then I should try and sign somebody else, I think. Rutu is gone as well, I think, even though we need defensemen down there. Let's go back over to the unsigned. I think we should have enough roster spaces to sign Utsorf as well. And Utsorf might be able to play defense because he's a decent uh, defensive forward. Because he's a grinder. I wouldn't sign Hordachuk already, but he's a guy that won't play in the AHL, so... Okay, so that's all good and well. Now we need to get into the big UFAs. Um, so starting off with Hunter Jones, like I said, he is gone because the Hornquist is really good. So best of luck in free agency there, Hunter. We don't need you anymore. And then it comes down to all these players. Um, starting off with our depth kind of guys. I think I'm going to let go of Emil Schulz for now, but we could always bring him back as a depth option. It's more just because I want to... Actually, I might just wait till the last day of free agency just to make sure we have enough roster players first. So. But I am going to let go of Anisimov because we did have to demote him down to the AHL. So, he is a defensive forward, but he's just not really... I don't know. I'm not really sold on him. He's already 27 as well. So, we are going to let him walk. Uh, Sapolviov is a solid depth option. He was losing morale though to ice time. So, I am going to let him walk, I think, as well. But he does actually want to come back, which is kind of surprising. And he wants a two-way deal, so I think I will give him that if he wants to accept it. Um, LaRose, like I said, since we just brought in Ajo, I think his time is up. Just because we already got, like, uh, what is it, uh, Shishkinov over here as a left winger. And he would be probably a better third-line left winger. So, more than likely, that is done for LaRose. Do my word definitely like going, letting go of because he's trying to get six million dollars and that's not what I want to give him. Best of luck in free agency, do my. We just replaced you with Aho anyways. Uh, Dobson I think I'm letting go of but I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. Depends on the cap situation. Because he wants like over six million. It comes down to these guys first. So let's start off with Chikrin because Chikrin's the most important out of the bunch. Um, because we don't have a really good defenseman if we lose him. So I will do three years. We could try like 90% off of this and see if he'll accept it. Because I want to try and get it down a little bit because 11.8 is a lot to give to one defenseman. Uh, but he is worth it to an extent, but he is going to be starting to drop off soon as well, which is not really that great. Uh, so we are going to try like 90% uh, 90 of this and see if I can get him for less. He actually wants 1150, so let me just get this done. Do a little bit of math, and we will times this by 0.9. So I might be able to drop him down to 10665, so we'll try that. And if I could get him for three years on that deal, that would be great. Uh, the reason I'm doing three years again is just because of Agostino, because Agostino is the main piece on this team that I'd like to keep around until his career is done. So let's do Chikrin. Three years at 10, 6, 7, 5. Try that out. And hopefully accepts that. And then it really depends on these centermen. What are they demanding? Geeky wants over $7 million, which is uh, it's not bad. Considering the fact that he is putting up around the same amount of points is somebody like Byfield and Sharon Govich. And he is the youngest out of the bunch. See, Byfield's trying to get over $8 million already, which is a bit questionable. I feel like if we're going to let go of somebody, it might be Sharon Govich, just because he suffered an injury, and also the fact um, that, uh, yeah, he's going to be dropping off soon, too. So, yeah, I think Sharon Govich is probably the gone one of these two. Let's try and get Geeky back first, because I think Geeky's decent. We can also try the... Uh, try 90% of this as well because I want him down but I think I am willing to give him a couple years we'll do three years as well just because of Agostino so three years he wants 7825 which is really not that bad it's just more be this is more precautionary just because I feel like he could drop off again because last year might be statistical based 
So we'll do three years at seven, eight, two, five. We'll do that times the 0.9. And we could looks like we could get him down to maybe just like above seven million, which is not bad. So I'll try that out. And then let's try Byfield. I'm gonna wait on Sharon Govich. Byfield I might give like only like a one year deal to. Yeah, I'm gonna do only like a one year deal for Byfield. Eight million. And that should be good. Let's advance the day, see if we get those big UFAs back. And yeah, all the RFAs are the most important ones right now as well. So we want to make sure we have enough cap space to sign them all. So let's just go through this quickly. Don't want to read them all, I want to take a look on my own. So Byfield didn't accept yet, Geeky didn't accept, and Shikran didn't accept. Oh my god. Oh, that's not good. We still have three big RFAs, and, or four big RFAs, which is what I was expecting. Let's try and get Shiki back again. And let's just give him what he's wanting almost. Or try and dock this down a little bit. Not too much, but not too uh, not too little either. Um, three years, 11.5. Hmm. Yeah, that might work. Three years, 11.5 for Shiki. And then we'll try a Geeky again. Try and do three years at what he's asking almost. Because it's not really that bad. Let's do 7.8 for three years. And like I said, Byfield will try and get him to a one-year deal. Maybe a two-year deal is okay. Because I want to keep him assigned like with like Aho and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll try the two-year deal at just a little bit above what he's asking. And I think that's good. Yeah, let's check on this. Fancy day. Because like I said, we need the cap space to sign those RFAs, but hopefully they come down a lot. So, looks like Byfield is rejecting. He doesn't think this team's going to win anytime soon, but we just brought in Aho, which is dumb. But Chikrin has re-signed, which is a huge one. And Geeky's also rejected. Because he thinks the exact same thing as Byfield. Okay, so we might have to give these guys a little bit more than they're actually asking, just because they don't think we're going to win anytime soon. So that's a little bit risky, but we could always trade players to get rid of cap space in next episode if we need to um, let's try three years at 8.4 maybe and yeah, that might be a little bit much but it is what it is and then we'll do a one-year deal again for Byfield and let's just give him like 8.6 I think pretty much everybody else here though is gone unless we need to I might have I might bring in Sharon Govich if Byfield continues to reject I feel like he, he we could get back for sure and then the rest of these guys, eh, I might have to let go of the rest of them just because of the hour face. I'm not 100% sure with that. Let's advance. Because we want to have money for free agents. So Byfield accepts. That's great. Geeky accepts as well. Perfect. Okay, so we have only 18 million. That's not a whole lot. We might have to trade away a cap whale, which I don't want to trade away Shelly, though. I just brought in Aho to get Shelly, though, which is the problem. That is not great. 18 million to resign. This is Saki, who was originally demanding, yeah, 5 million. Shishkinov's demanding 2. That's only 7, maybe 8. That's 10. Yeah, we might actually let go of Pedersen yeah, at this rate. Because he's wanting 9. So, yeah, combine these four R phase, probably eat up the rest of our cap space, which. Means our team is maybe going to be probably pretty weak. So I probably should sign Schulz to a two-way deal just in case. And so Polvyov didn't accept, but I am going to give him a little bit more money two-way wise. See if he accepts that. But I think our team is going to be a little bit bad because of that. So we might have to trade away somebody making a decent amount of cap. I just don't know who. I'm trying to get this team to win now. So we do have a lot of guys locked up for a couple of years though. Which is kind of risky because Tukinen's UFA status is next year. And our defensive core might be a little bit weak because of this. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to find some cheap players probably in free agency. Just because of those re-signings. So trading for Aho might have put us into a bad cap situation. But when you think about it, it does give us a better shot at winning the cup, I think. So I'll do what I want to do, I guess. So those two guys are going to reject again. 
I don't want to give you one-way deals though. I could give you one-way deals and uh, see around the same. I just want to make sure we have depth on our NHL roster because if we don't, we're going to run into problems because LaRose is gone, that type of thing. So let's advance again. They're still rejecting. One of them accepts. That's good. Yeah, I think Sharon Govich, Adopts, and LaRose are gone for sure. Just because I want to make sure we got the money for those RFAs first. Let's see if I could get Schools to accept. Uh, I don't want to give him over a million, really. 975. Emil, please accept. This is the last day for free agency, and he has rejected again. Which means we do not get him back, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, so... Hmm. Let me take a look at what our roster looks like with guys that are actually signed still. Um, so let's go to forwards and let's just uh, sort by the ones that are actually signed here. So we got Mitchkov, we got Aho. Let's actually just count three, six, nine roster players signed for next year. Actually, wait. This isn't even sorted by overall, though, isn't? I don't know. Three, six, seven. One's an RFA. We almost have a full roster still, which is good. But we just need to make sure our RFAs accept. That's pretty much that. I don't know if we really need much in terms of forwards. Like we could try and bring in somebody. Because what do we got here for centers and stuff like that? Um, yeah, we got a good center core still. Like Sapolvyov could play as center or we could still run McGillis as a center. Left wing wise, we're a little bit weak. But we do have... Yeah, we might need a still like a fourth line left wing or something. But it might be hard with the cap situation unless those guys come down a lot. And then Redmond, I'd like to get into probably the... Hmm. I could trade away somebody if I want to. To make up roster room. But right now we almost have a full roster. Like I think we pretty much just need like a fourth line left wing. And maybe a depth forward. Or do we already have like a depth forward? So Polvyov would be a depth forward. So maybe we could try and find two left wingers. Because I don't know if I'll use McGillis as a left winger. Uh, and then defensively, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I don't want to run Bilesma this year, so we might have to find another top 6 defenseman. And then we could run somebody as a 7th D-man. I want to almost play Ortmeier because he's got X-Factors and he's been so good in the AHL for so long. But he's not really an NHL defenseman is the thing. So, yeah, we definitely need to bring in some things, I think. And then goalie-wise, we got our goaltending situation, which is good. Like I said, we could let go of Pedersen if we need to. But I think his asking price should come down. So let's take a look at the available free agents and the trading block. And then that'll be it, I think, for this episode. So we don't really have a lot of money to spend. So let's just go to UFAs. And let's take a look at what we get. So we probably need, like I said, a fourth-line left winger. Um, let's see what we got. Actually, let's sort by roll. That might be a little bit better. Hopefully, there's some like decent discount players. Uh, Lucas L. Venice would be a decent discount player. Not really sure on what he fits though. Ridley Grieg, got a grinder for the bottom six as well. Interesting. Riley Tufty, maybe. A lot of these guys are a little bit older. There's a young fourth line. Oh, we could bring back a Nisimov. That might not be bad because he is a fourth line left winger. He only wants 825 for two years. So maybe he's the guy that we want to bring back. I don't know. There's a lot of other random 78s. Oh, look who it is. Victor Varlamov, our former draft pick. I don't really know if a playmaker on that fourth line would work though. Nicholas Clefbaum, a low top six playmaker. That's got 99 passing. Jeez. Okay, that guy might be intriguing. He's only 24. And then play him on the fourth line, but he wants 1.85, which is a little bit out of budget. Unless those other guys come down for the RFAs. So maybe Clef Bomb is interesting. Uh, there's also Rath G, who's a two way forward. He's got good defensive stats mostly, or at least awareness wise. Looks like he's never been. Has he never played in the NHL? No, oh, he played a bit in the NHL again with Carolina. So you might know Sebastian Ajo a bit. He wouldn't be a bad option either. He wants over almost $2 million, so we might have to wait till his asking price comes down. 
Uh, but yeah, there definitely is some fourth line options if you guys see anything you want me to bring in for the fourth line. And after that, well, actually, we could probably use the third line left wing, but we probably can't afford it yet. So I don't really know what we do with that. But if we are to find a third line left wing, Burakovsky really doesn't want too much. We probably have to find like a veteran that really wants like only one million or something. Really depends on what those RFAs accept for. And then finally we need like a top six defenseman, maybe a depth defender. Unless we decide to bring in, uh, use, use Ortnier as a def depth defenseman, I don't know. Uh, what we got here for top six demons. So Krug, a lot of veterans, Devon Taze is not bad, but two million. Olsen only wants 825, he might be our best bet to be honest. Because he's cheap. So... I don't really know. We don't have a lot of work, uh, room to work with. Like I said, we could trade away somebody that's making some money to try and free up more. But right now, I'm not too sold on that idea. Sandberg. And then goalie-wise, in case we somehow let go of Pedersen, there's goalies out there as well. This guy only wants 825. Hmm. Interesting. So there is that. I'm not sure if our cap situation is that good anymore, but I think bringing in Aho is going to make our top six a legit threat. Because now, if you look literally, like who is a UFA next year? Byfield was the big one, but then there's also McGillis, who's going to demand maybe a bit more. Gallagher. There's a lot of RFAs. And yeah, Hornquist is maybe going to be asking for more, but a lot of our guys are locked up for next season. Most of them are big guys, too. So, that's good. Let's take a look at the trading block quickly, and then that'll be it for this episode. Just in case we want to make any trades. Just to free up cap space, or maybe there's somebody making a cheap contract. Vakaninen making 5-7, that's too much. A lot of these guys we won't be able to afford unless we are to keep, uh, clear out some cap space. Like, Shelley's making the worst contract on the team, and I'm kind of questioning why I gave him so many long so much long term deals but it is what it is we're trying to win as soon as possible um, but yeah right now there doesn't seem to be too much on the block in terms of stuff if we actually want to trade for it um, Bolt Duke yeah a lot of these guys are probably making too much Hendrickson's decently cheap I think we had him at one point if I'm not mistaken as like a fourth line option yeah we did he might not be bad to bring in on that fourth line. He only wants 1.48, or he is signed for 1.48. But I just don't really know what we do to free up cap space. <clears throat> Maybe once those RFAs accept him, we'll start making some trades or sign other signings and stuff like that. Because I want to make sure we have enough cap space for them first. But I think their asking prices should come down a decent amount. But I think Pedersen's days here are probably limited just because of the fact... He's going to be a UFA probably next offseason, I think it is. And we have a lot of uh, guys up for renewal that year. Or, well, actually, a lot of our big guys are already signed. Um, and we need probably cheaper goalie options anyways. He's going to be probably demanding like six plus million as a UFA, which is something that I don't want to do. So I think it, this might be one of his last seasons with us, if I'm being honest. And then that way we could run Hornquist in probably Galiev, who's in the AHL. Because he's got starter potential, he's close to being ready, that type of thing. Um, and that is pretty much it. So, anyways guys, that is going to do it for this episode of our Arizona Coyotes franchise mode. So, in next episode, we'll take it to free agency. We might make some signings, depending on what those RFAs accept for. And if we have to actually the cap space to sign free agents to actually to an extent. And yeah, hopefully this team could be better this year with the addition of Sebastian Ajo, who is a really good playoff player and a really good regular season player. And that's something we definitely needed to bring into this team. So let me just link down below and I'll see you guys next time.